Hello guys and welcome to episode 22 of my Total War Warhammer 2 playthrough playing as the Wood Elves on very hard difficulty. This is Mortal Empires and we're going for world domination and today it starts with Findol who is going to be moving out of the Eagle Gate towards either Tor Anrock or Tor Elia. I think it's probably more beneficial to go towards Tor Anrock since it's a gold settlement. So let's go and take that out. To battle. Easily going to be able to auto resolve that so I will. We and will we will raise that to the ground. And we also got a 20% ward save from that. That's really, really nice. Lord of the Let's go into Findol's details and give him that. The Talisman of Preservation. Well deserved. Crown right, let's uh, take that to Anrock Settlement. And we will build it up. Honestly, I probably should have thought about seeding it if it's already got gold there. But oh well. Um, Findol leveled up from that. So let's continue with the swinging bows now in order to increase weapon strength on these units. Right, now we'll jump over to Dotean, who's going to take Sabatun. And we're just going to seed that one. Get ourselves the cattle pastures there for the extra unit experience for cavalry recruits. I think that's going to put it up to 5 experience on recruitment now, which is really nice. Give to Duthus immortality, that's good. And we're going to have, like, Sedashal move towards the Mangrove Coast, and we'll take that in the next turn. At Oxil, we'll build ourselves up a sacrificial grounds. I think it's time we started improving our weapon strength even more. We're streaking on 120 weapon strength now, it's pretty crazy. Um... Let's see, Vilgin has leveled up. Continue with Endurance of the Oak. Anyone else leveled up? Deatok has. Let's now go for the Skewering Branch. Vatayan also leveled up. We'll give him Violent Delights. And that is everything done as far as I'm aware. Isra's top is just going to be Standing on the border to replenish. And everybody has been moved. Fantastic. We'll end the turn there. We're over 2 billion in cash now. Which is insane. Northern's looking very weak. I'll tell you that much. I don't think they have like any armies really. Maybe a couple of armies. But we've defeated... A lot of their armies in the last episode. We took out Alistair. We also took out um, Tyrion as well. So they're probably going to be trying to recruit new armies, but we're all over Lothurn now. So it's going to be very hard for them. See what Hexawattle does. Also, it'd be good to keep an eye on the, uh, the new rogue army that's popped up. There's an army at Skeggy. Okay, so that's like the first proper Hexawattle army I think I've seen. Okay. If we go into our diplomacy, where is at the Hunters service. of Kernos? Oh, <laughs> wow. They're all the way down here. I swear, if they declare war on me and take a settlement down there, I'm not going to be best pleased. Anyway, time to take uh, Arnheim. With Dirthu. We'll raise that. And I may as well colonize it with Dirthu on the same turn. Oh, that's a tiny elven colony. Okay, that's another one of those weird things. Interesting. So I'm assuming that's what that means then. Yeah, Elven Colony. This location is the site of an ancient High Elf Colony. It increases income from ports. This may provide a unique building chain. I like it. Okay, so here it's actually given us three construction slots. So we have the Foraging Grove already. Maybe we should get the Obsidian quarry as well. Or we could just get the sacrificial grounds on top of that. 
Now we'll get the obsidian quarry, because that just improves income across the board. Right, with the Tan, we're going to head towards the Mine of the Bearded Skulls. So let's just uh, march that way. We have Dalseth here, who we're going to use to assassinate this chap. That was successful, very nice. Give him Tempered Rigor. We're going to get Sedashal to take Mangrove Coast. Perfect. We'll just see that one. Good. Right, he unlocked himself some new armor. We've got the armor of fortune here, but I think the helm of discord is pretty damn good. But he actually found the gambler's armor, which is also a very good um, armor because it gives ward save. So Sedashal now is going to head back towards Sabatoon and we'll head up to like Axolotl. Right, we need to destroy Sorcerer's Islands and. Uh, then we can have Treebeard just zoom across the ocean. Uh, probably towards like Pox Marsh or the Awakening. Whatever's easier. Because we don't have any armies here at the moment, so it could be very easy for them to come from like Zahutek or uh, the Temple of Glenken towards uh, Pox Marsh. Which wouldn't be good for us. Let's have a look at these armies anyway. We're going to world roots over to the ancient city of uh, Quintex. We're going to have Isra start zoom down towards like Iron Spike or Cecil de Tor or even the Moon Shard. We'll have to wait and see. Um, Circo this turn. I think we maybe meant to have him colonize this in the last turn, but. Didn't get around to it. Uh, Woody McTree base is going to be taking Tor Kravalvai. Let's get the Banner of Eternal Flame onto the Forest Dragon. And we will just sort of resolve that. Because I'm probably going to. I was going to say raise it and then seed it, but apparently not. Doesn't matter either way. Jump into his character details. He currently has glittering scales. Let's give him the armor of fortune. We'll just upgrade him there. And for his skills, we'll finish off Shield of the Forest. That's really nice. And for his branch wraith, I think I'm going to pick up Deadly Onslaught. Right, Deatok is going to run his way round to Tor Sarior, or we could maybe World Roots over. I don't think he can world roots while he's in the settlement, so I think we're just gonna we're just gonna march around. Iskira can hit Toranlek. And this is a battle we're actually gonna have to play out due to the 50-50 uh Even in water death, resolve. Let's quick save and fight it on the battle map. So yeah, I have no idea why Toranlek has gate guard. There must be some sort of unique building there that the High Elves can get. We have six units of Way Watchers, so their archers won't last very long. We also have four dragons. And when it comes to walls, dragons do very, very well. We'll put two on the right side, two on the left side. Make sure all my Way Watchers kind of start in range not too close though otherwise they can be targeted by enemy archers right we'll have our tree kin knock on the gates I might have a couple go over here with a tree man or two and then we'll have the rest here with my leader and the third tree man. That's group one, that's group two. And that's everything. Alright, let's gamble for more wins. Start the deployment, start the battle. Alright, so you can see here they're not able to like fire back at us with their Lothan Sea Guard, but we're able to fire at them, so that's absolutely perfect. Those Poor Lothan Seagull getting decimated. 
Love the Sea Guard though, they do look cool. They do look really cool. But they are getting wrecked. Right, so we probably want one to come along here and hit a couple of nice breath attacks onto these guys. Right, that's one unit of Lodden Sea Guard completely destroyed. So unit of white lines of trace gone. Oh wow, we just put a breath attack into the back of my forest dragon. Nice one. <laughs> Alright, we'll just have the forest dragons come down into these white lines. Knock them off the wall there and kill them. Alright, let's have the guys climb the walls. Have three climb this side. Three climb that side. Turn off the skirmish. Put them on to guard. Make sure they're all running forwards. Good. Alright, we've broken through here. Let's just charge through to the centre. And of course, we've broken through here, so let's just charge on through to the centre as well. Right, the breath attacks are ready to go. I'm not quite sure what's going on here. They seem to be derping out a little bit. Oh well. Destroyed one set, so we can take out the other. Right, let's hit these dragon princes as hard as we can. I love the way that we can make dragon princes run away with one breath attack. That is pretty damn awesome. Up on this wall as well, like our way watchers are able to take on these gate guards quite well. Look at their like two one hand sword attacks. It's like the animations are just really awesome. And they're using their like bows at close range as well, so there's that, <laughs> which is uh, working well for me. And I think that's honestly just victory across the board. I've got to just dive some dragons into the silver helms, and then I'm pretty sure we're good. Maybe get that breath attack onto the dragon princes there just to make them run away. And that's it. That's game. Fantastic. End the battle there for a decisive victory. It will always make me wonder why the uh, water resolve is 50-50 in battles like that, especially when it goes so far in your favour. I think maybe it's because the Dragon Princes have a high relative power. Also the fact that there's two Lords, while well, they have a Mage and the Noble, so they don't really do much. Okay, so we will raise that. I'll take that over. Fantastic. Loads of stuff gained from that. And we will finish off Impenetrable Bark. So it's gonna, it's an absolute monster now. Nothing's gonna kill him. And we pretty much own the entirety of North Lothern. Now we gotta get on the inside, take like Torsario 
um, the Gaian Vale and Torfinu. We've also got to take the White Tower of Hoeth. We do have Orion here. But we're going to have Orion take out the Tor Elethus no refugees. Make way. We're going to just Kardos. charge them down. And maybe we'll take uh, Valzanville while we're here. We will be soon meeting up with uh, Vindol on this side of things. He can actually go and take White Peak this turn. And I might be able to even with a depleted force. Yeah, easy. We'll just seed that one so that I can continue with the replenishment. Get foraging groves there and the Elven Haven. Okay, cool. You need me? Now since we do have so much cash, I'm not even sure if we need foraging groves anymore. Like we could just build sacrificial grounds now. Proud son of Atheloran. Tolteran leveled up. Give her arcane conduit. Nice. Right, now to carry on with the rest of my lords, although I'm pretty sure all of them have been moved for this turn, haven't they? Yeah, looks like it. So let's send the turn. See what Lothurn and Hexwat will get up to. They're going to go and attack Evershale. I feel like we should be able to win that. But maybe not with the Lord there. I don't know. I'm just going to auto-resolve it. I don't have time to waste on that. They didn't even actually take it back. <laughs> How stupid is that? Alright, Teclis has recruited himself some more troops, but... He won't be alive for much longer, I don't think. I'm not sure what that agent's trying to do. Just constantly doing steel technology by the looks of things. Okay, now Hexwattle's turn. Fortunately, we can't see much of their land, so we only see the armies that matter. But they're going to come onto the water towards Arnheim. Fine by me. I think that's right next to Derthu. I mean, if Derthu has a replenished army, he might be able to take that attack on the water and just kill them. Cavalry focus to steed or not to steed <laughs> recruit the following type of unit melee cavalry that will give us like plus two unit experience maybe it's time to create like another army just so that like solely relies on cavalry that would be uh, interesting to say the least right, maybe get uh, Daith going again recruit Daith Assistance. Gonna take us up to minus thirty six thousand a turn. These are dark times. And we'll start recruiting ourselves some like wild riders. Probably just one for now, because then we get the extra bonus, it'll take us up to like unit rank six recruits for cavalry. It's gonna be pretty insane. I might even have Daith actually come off his ego and go on to a horse himself. Go on to an elven steed. Oh, why can I not do that? That's weird. May as well give him some weapons while we're here. What sort of battle. Uh, ward saves good. Chanted item. We'll give him a... Maybe the potion of full hardiness. Oh, look at all of these banners that we have now. 
campaign map movement range is where it's at. Poor spirits, fantastic. Maybe getting the speed banner would be good if we're getting mostly horsemen there. Right, let's get the banner of eternal flame and we'll get the razor standard as well. Okay, so he's kitted out. He'll complete the mission for me. Alright, as for Dirthu, Dirthu's replenishing. Okay. So maybe that's why we're going to be attacked by Ellis here. That army, though, is pretty damn good. Holy moly. Multiple feral, feral Bastilodons. Normal Bastilodon with the uh, re re revivification crystal. Um, an ancient Stegodon. We got the Feral Carnosaur. Horned Ones. Chameleon Skinks. And Temple Guards. Like, all of these units are just fantastic. I'm a little bit wary about leaving Dirthu in there. I feel like we should like sw switch him out because otherwise he's going to get attacked while his army is depleted. I just want to check this out. <laughs> that is just... That is just so lame. So lame. <laughs> oh my, what did I even lose? I lost um, Wild Riders and I lost um, Treekin? Must have been Treekin. Can recruit those back at the same turn. <laughs> I'm not sure if I should have done that or not. I don't know. <laughs> uh, maybe it would have been better to fight that out on the battle map. <laughs> because it would have been cool but uh, I, I just couldn't not do that because they've done it to me so many times in this campaign in the past and it just had like my army is just wiped out by an auto resolve <laughs> I could have gone either way to be fair but that's another settlement under our control and uh, we'll continue down with this Ross dot. Let's go to Iron Spike here and take that. <laughs> Fantastic. Alright. Zerko um, may as well come down and take the other side down here. We could, I think, world route's over. If we jump out the settlement. We can Maybe world route? Oh we can't. Okay. You cannot you cannot adopt this stance in this region. Oh. Alright, well we'll just carry on down to the LSI lay then, and we'll take that. Get the cattle pastures built there. And Tor of Reese. It's going to take us up to plus six by default. Alright. Deer Tok can attack Teclas. Right, this is going to be a battle. Don't you worry about that. Although, saying that, it doesn't have to be, but I am going to jump in and fight this one on the battle map. So this is my least experienced army, I'm, I'm pretty sure, other than the army that I'm currently building. But that army that I'm building is going to be pretty experienced anyway, because we're going to be recruiting them at least unit rank 6. Potentially like unit rank 8, once both of the cattle pastures get finished. Okay, we got a little bit of extra wind magic from that, but not nothing too much. Right, let's just group all of these guys up. We'll keep the wild riders on the flanks. We watch it behind. And I need to have my branch wraith with these guys as well. Start the deployment, start the battle. Our group one just charge forwards. I need to keep them locked.
Yes, that works too. <laughs> I'm not sure why they're spreading out like that. I think it's because um, I gave them that movement order beforehand. Right, let's bring the dragons to the flanks. Way watchers. With haste. Hold position. Make sure my wild riders are moving up on the flank there, so I can use them when I want to. Gonna be my main priority. Shooting their archers. Looks like my way watchers were already focusing them anyway. Get a breath attack into these spearmen. That'd be good. Hit there. Way watchers. Straight away. I think I see why the auto resolve was like so far in our favor. Because they're all just running away. The fear factor of this army is just absolutely insane. Like you think all the dragons, or the tree men, there's just nothing they can do. Have the way watchers just run forwards and find their targets. Doesn't really matter about our casualties or healing up or anything because we're just going to be getting a replenishment in the next turn anyway. So, otherwise, I would kind of go for like those big lifebloods that I do at the end of the game. But that's victory, even with that eagle coming back. Oh, the flame spire phoenix, sorry. Job done. Fourteen losses. Didn't even see Teclis in all of that. Looks like he took a beating, maybe from one of my tree treemen. Half expected to like see some big old magic spells happening, but no such thing. Alright, job done. Death holds no fear. We'll just seed that, get our replenishment. We'll put in the sacrificial grounds there. Alright, next up we'll go towards uh, the guy in Vale and then we can head down to like Torfinu and so on. Let's see, next army to move is Orion. He's gonna kill off this rogue army for me. Attack! And then is going to attack one of the settlements if we're in range. I might just attack Tor Sethai, um, just to like water resolve that and then siege so that we get the replenishment. And then next turn we will be in range to attack Valzanville any anyway, so that's good. We can get the exo exotic animal tamer there as well, which gives us an extra 250 per turn, which will be a lot more due to our foraging groves. Uh, Tala, I think we'll just get Flurry of Bowels, just to make sure that we, you know, if we ever have a forest battle, we get that bonus. How can I assist you? Right, with Findol taking White Peak, we'll move down to Tor Elia with him. I need to build up the 
buildings at Eagle Gate. So we'll get sacrificial grounds and foraging groves. We'll do the same here. Sacrificial grounds and foraging groves. Not sure we need waystones. Or maybe we do. Now let's get rid of the foraging groves and build waystones. Because I don't want this army of Ace Lala Lan Nan to come and take any of the gates off me. Alright, as for a skitter, the skitter can come down into the center as well. May as well have him like march towards Evershale or Evershale. Not sure if it's Evershale or Evershale. <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, we'll use Escura to like finish off this army. Um, I might even use Escura to take the guy in Vale, and then that will allow Deatok to move around to Torfinu and the White Tower of Hoeth. But either way, guys, that has unfortunately been my time. If you look at this map in the top right, it's certainly becoming very green indeed. And it, yeah, it's only a matter of time until we destroy Hexawattle completely. We took out what looked like an absolutely awesome army of theirs. Um, on the sea, um, which I guess was a little disappointing in the fact that we won't actually see those units in battle, but yeah, it's just a quick way of getting rid of that army, isn't it? Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.